Hi guys, it's Miss Tara from the Niles District Library and we're talking about library school today. We're going to be talking about historical fiction genre. Lots of cool things to talk about for historical fiction. So what is historical fiction, you ask? Well, historical fiction are books that are intended to tell a fictional story, so a story that didn't really happen, but it takes place in a time that really did happen. So for example, here, The War That Saved My Life, one of my favorites. Uh, takes place during World War II in England. So the character here um, is Ava, is not a real character, but people like her did exist, but World War II was a real time. Henry's Freedom Box takes place during the Civil War. Henry is not a real character, but there are many characters like Henry, who, or people like Henry who did exist during the Civil War. Molly Banneke is a pilgrim, and there Molly is not a real person, but many girls like Molly did exist. So generally it is considered that historical fiction is 30 years or more in the past. Some people say more, some people say less. The general idea is around 30 years in the past, maybe more, depending on who your teacher is and what the requirements are. Okay. So the characters are fictional, but the setting is not. So for example, the little boy here on the picture of I Survived is not real, but the Hindenburg was a real disaster that happened. Esperanza is not a real character, but she represents many people who really did exist during the migrant uprising in the 1920s and 1930s. So Carrie from the Great Storm of Galveston in 1900 is not a real person, but the Galveston hurricane really did happen. Um, they might encounter famous events like the Holocaust, like the Civil War, but the characters themselves are not real. The not real characters might encounter real people. So you might be reading a book about the American Revolution and your character gets to meet George Washington. Okay? So the characters are not real is the main idea there. Everything included in the book must be something that could have happened or someone that could have really existed during that time. The settings must be accurate and authentic or else they're not really true historical fiction books. And when you're writing an historical fiction book, it is really important to do the research over what the characters would have worn, how they would have talked, what kinds of things they would have used, what their home would have looked like. So we've got the American Girl series. Uh, we've got Felicity here, 1774 Boston. Felicity is not a real person, but many girls like Felicity did live in Boston in 1774. And they really would have dressed like she's dressed, and they really would have seen things that you see in the picture. They wouldn't drive cars. They would have rode horses. Their dresses were long. The streets were not paved. They were dirt. Uh, the men wore three-cornered or three uh, cornered hats here in the corner like you see. Uh, same with Catherine called Birdie during the Middle Ages. She Characters would have dressed just like her. They would have used a quill instead of a pen on paper. Okay, uh, Catherine's not a real character, but many girls like her did exist during that time period. Same with the Watsons go to Birmingham. Uh, the Watsons are not a real family, but there were many families like the Watsons who really did exist. So the difference between historical fiction and nonfiction is summed up very quickly to say that historical fiction is not real. Nonfiction is real. Okay, so in historical fiction, the characters are not real. They're made up, but they might encounter real people. And in nonfiction, nobody, none of the characters are made up because they're not characters. They're real people. They're more like biographies, which you will find in nonfiction. The story, which might be based on real events, didn't actually happen. And in nonfiction, everything you're reading actually happened. Okay? True facts might be incorporated into the story with fictional characters for historical fiction. But in nonfiction, everything is true that you're reading. Okay? Uh, and they're shelved in different places if you come to the library. So in the library, you will find historical fiction books like I Survived, The Destruction of Pompeii in AD 79. You would find that book in the fiction section. And if you look on the spine of your book, it'll have a letter call number. The call number is the number or letter that 
uh, tells us where to find it in the library. And if a book is fiction, it has all letters for the call number. As opposed to nonfiction, you will find that in the nonfiction section, so the true section of the library. And if you look on the spine, the sticker will have numbers for a call number. So that's the difference. So I survived is historical fiction. Pompeii was a real thing, but the characters you see and the characters that are in the book are not real characters. What was Pompeii, which is uh, one of the, I call them the big headed biographies, but they're the, the who HQ, the who was, where was, uh, who was series um, are all about what really happened in Pompeii, true facts, actual photographs showing the remains of the people from Pompeii, because if you know anything about Pompeii, there aren't skeletons that are left, there are impressions of people in the ash, okay, because they were, they were trapped in the volcanic ash. So the difference is you have, in a nonfiction book, you'll find a timeline, you'll find actual photographs, you will find um, true facts, maybe even a biography. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. Here's some great historical fiction books, and you can find all of these here at the Niles District Library. Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan, The Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder, A Long Walk to Water by Linda Sue Park, Stella by Starlight by, Shannon, by Sharon Draper. Gone Crazy in Alabama by Rita Williams Garcia. That is a three book trilogy. Out of the Dust by Karen Hess won the Newbery Award. And it's about the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, told in a diary format, which is kind of fun to read. Enemy at the Fort is part of the American Girl Histories and Mysteries series. This one is by Sarah Masters Buckley. The Ballad of Lucy Whipple by Karen Cushman. Uh, on the next row here, we've got The Great Chicago Fire. That's a graphic novel about the Great Chicago Fire. Elizabeth George Spear writes some great historical fiction. This one pictured here is Sign of the Beaver. We've got the Dear America series. These are also diary formats. The Dear America series are about girls from different time periods. This is the diary of Mary Driscoll of an Irish mill girl. So she's an Irish immigrant in 1847. So Dear America is girls, if you want the same idea, but boys, the boy series by Dear America is called My Name is America. Same thing, boys and girls have different titles for their series. Salt by Helen Frost actually takes place uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is kind of cool because that's near where we are here in Michigan. True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle, also a Newbery Honor winner. You see the little medal, we've got several Newbery Honor books here, this little silver medal. Um, it's about a girl who is sailing on the open seas during, I think it's the 1850s. Uh, Heart of the Samurai, uh, a Japanese boy, and he's whaling. Uh, I forget what the time period is, but a long time ago. Paper Wishes is about uh, the internment of the Japanese during World War II. Another great holocaust is When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr. Historical fantasy is different than historical fiction, and sometimes uh, they can be confusing. So I just wanted to talk about that really quickly, about what the difference is between historical fiction and historical fantasy. So right away, if you're looking at the picture of the flashback four here, you can see something a little, a little bit wrong here. So there are many types of books that are also historical fiction, but they have fantasy elements. So fantasy elements are things that can't really happen. So for example, we're talking about time travel. We're talking about talking animals. We're talking about characters using tools that they wouldn't have used during the time period. So as the example that you see here, uh, the girl has a cell phone in her hand during Abraham Lincoln's time in the Civil War. Um, he is holding uh, an auto zoom camera, which they certainly would have would not have had during Abraham Lincoln's time. The setting might be centered around a point in history, but something is not quite like it should be. Okay, so Ranger in Time is a time traveling dog. That is certainly something that wouldn't happen. The Infinity Ring is about a group of kids who have a magical ring that allows them to go to different time periods to solve mysteries. 
while that's a really cool idea, time travel is not something that we can do currently. Maybe someday in the future, wouldn't that be exciting? George Washington's Cows is a really cute picture book about Mount Vernon, which is George Washington's real home. You can actually go there and see it, and it looks like this. Um, but it's about how his cows wore dresses and his pigs go to college, and obviously that's not something that happens. Other historical fantasy books have alternate hi alternative histories. So, for example, instead of us Americans winning the American Revolution, what would happen if the British won? What would happen if uh, Abraham Lincoln was never assassinated? What would happen if um, World War II never ended? What would happen if Alexander Graham Bell never invented the cell phone or the, the telephone? All kinds of alternative history books like that. Those are historical fiction, kind of, but we call them historical fantasy. There is a difference. And here's some more examples. So Return to Titanic is a, ser a four-book series where these kids touch artifacts from the Titanic and they get transported back to the boat, which didn't obviously happen. Magic Tree House, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. Um, there is no Magic Tree House that you can open a book and get sucked into it. Kind of a fun idea, but not really happening. The Imagination Station, uh, where these kids go back in time to different time periods, obviously is not also really happening. The Left Behinds is another series by David Potter, the iPhone that saved George Washington, as you can see. George Washington didn't even know what a cell phone was. He didn't know what telephones were, TV, none of that stuff. So obviously the girl who's got earmuffs and a hoodie during the time of George Washington would not have really happened. Backwards cap, boy, no way. Okay, so they might be based on historical fiction, but they're actual historical fantasy, kind of meshing the two kinds of ideas together. Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed our presentation on historical fiction. I hope you now know what historical fiction is, some ideas of some books that you can read and come see me at the library to check out, and the difference between nonfiction and historical fiction, and the difference between historical fiction and historical fantasy. I hope you want to read as many books as I did presenting, uh, making this presentation for you. I hope you have a great day and enjoy I enjoy all of those great historical fiction books. We'll see you next time. Ear hugs. Bye.